Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. So this is part of our bug bounty bootcamp that I'm going to be recording right now. First of all, we usually do talks, then I'm going to give exercises for you to do, uh, and also a little bit of demonstration, of course. Now, CSRF, you might be wondering, what is the big issue with CSRF? Because CSRF, it's so overblown, isn't it? Now, CSRF, let's imagine you have a bank. And you make a post call, a post call to slash transfer, which creates a transfer, of course. An attacker can copy that form to their own website, make it completely invisible, and put in a button, click here to win a million dollars. If you click that button, then, well, then you're screwed, because the hidden form is going to make money over to his account, to the attacker's account. Now, if we implement a random token, and we bind that to the session we can insert that random token into every single input f into every single form that we have on our page very simple there nothing out of the ordinary yet the only thing is the attacker cannot know this token because it is session bound and then we can check that token and verify it using a safe function such as hash equals do not use equals equals, use hash equals, it's a safe function. Now, this is the CSRF verification, how it's usually done. Session bound, filled into every form, and then verified upon submission. This is done on the create, update, and read of objects. Now, not what do I mean by that? Let's say you have an email address. If I can change that, I'm going to have to add a CSRF token in there. That is very important. We'll see why later on. If I have a form behind any login, I probably need a CSRF token. It never hurts to check. One of the things where it can go wrong is where there's no CSRF where it's needed. For example, in that change email example and i know that these days there are a lot of extra countermeasures like banks use multi-factor authentication if you want to change your email address you often have to uh, enter your password as well and that is basically a vulnerability if there's no csrf token but if there's no password being asked either if the password is being asked that is also something that the attacker cannot know so as long as there's an element of unknown for the attacker, that's good. Now the server might not be able to check the CSRF token if it's there. It might check only if there is a CSRF token present at all. It might check only the length of the CSRF token or some constraint, some, some constraint where not hash equals is being used, but the wrong function to compare these where there's just one constraint, like start to have length, something like that, um, or not binding that CSRF token to the session, of course, because then the attacker can insert their own CSRF token. The impact can be quite severe. Uh, it might not seem like it, but you can actually trigger an account takeover if, the, if you can change the email address and no password is being asked. If there's is the CSRF issue there, well, then you can change the email address to yours, request a password reset, and then you can reset that password, and the victim has no longer access to any of their uh, anything of their account. So you have a complete account takeover. You can delete accounts, anything related to the creation, deletion, and updating of a property of object. We've already seen that. See that. But we can also chain the CSRF attack. For example, if we want, we used to go for the cookies. These days, we try to steal the CSRF token with XSS because then we can do all of these actions that we saw before. Or if we have a self cross site scripting, but it's form, well, then we might have. For example, a form where we can insert cross-site scripting attack vector. And there's no longer a self cross-site scripting, but an actual full-blown cross-site scripting attack. If the victim is logged in, clicks on the link, they're going to be injected with a cross-site scripting vulnerability. SSRF into CSRF is also possible. So there's many different possibilities to change CSRFs. Now, I'm going to um, go 
send you guys to hexpert.com slash csrf. Just go to hexpert.com slash csrf or hexpert.com slash labs slash csrf. Both are the same, um, but you will find them also in the description below. And I want you guys to solve the challenges there. There are also solutions, but I want you to try them first. You don't have to use any man in the middle proxy yet. That will come later in the bootcamp. Thank you and on to the next one.